welcome to Picky Pat. We're going to do a 2 litre HDI starter motor change. Uh, this is about as tricky as they come in the 206 with boost pipes, which is aftermarket. Uh, other vehicles are actually a little bit easy to get to, bigger engine bays. First thing we do is remove your battery. Don't forget about your radio codes if you've got an original radio. Uh, it's usually an 8mm or 10mm on the negative, the earth side, and normally just an original clump on the positive side. We take those off, then we get a 13mm on an extension, and remove the clamp bolt, which is just there. Mine is completely stripped out. I remember this in a couple of seconds from a previous time I fitted it, and I thought, I'll fix that one day. Well, that one day is today, it seems. But I'll get to that later. Contemplating life. Next, we're going to remove the airbox and the pipe that goes down the inlet. We need access to the front of the gearbox to get to the starter bolts. And the simplest thing is to remove the airbox. So we use a Jubilee driver or a 7mm on a socket usually we'll get that. And remove the Jubilee or un tighten the Jubilee connected to the MAF. Unclip the MAF, which is just underneath of the plug. There it is. Just hear a click. And then it's basically a short, sharp tug up, but I'm just checking there's nothing around it, no pipes connected, no wiring in the way. We pull the two part pipes apart, the MAF and the inlet pipe, and then give that in box a good sharp tug. There we go. And it comes out. Put that aside somewhere safe. Now I do think about trying to remove this section of pipe only for the benefit of me trying to fix the battery tray, but... It was too much of a fiddle, and you don't need to do this. But what you do need to do, which I'm going to do in a second, is grab some paper towel or a cloth and jam it down that inlet. Uh, this prevents you dropping anything you don't want down that inlet, pretty much anything but air, uh, and regretting life later. So there we go, that's done. Now I'm nice and safe. I'm going to do that again in a second. I'm also doing that down the inlet pipe for the, for the air box, so the air box doesn't suck anything up. Now, if you have a front-mounted intercooler, You'll need to remove that pipe, which I'm doing now. Whatever clamps you used, mine are just two nickel or 10 mil clamps. One at the top, one at the bottom somewhere, and we'll pull that pipe out of the way. But you can skip forward if you don't have this pipe. So I'm going to do the same thing on the inlet there. Just going to shove a bit of cloth in it. Again, you might not have to do this if you don't have boost pipes, but I always do this as a matter of practice. Just prevents uh, tragedies later on down the line. Now I'm just going to whip this bolt out on the battery tray. Bit of a lever. There she goes. It's a little clamp with a little bolt. Yep, that's where it belongs on the floor. Next, pull the battery out of the way. Bolt tray is always handy, by the way. I always keep them around somewhere. There we go. And now we're going to get a closer look at the starter motor and the wires that go to it. Alright, so let's get ourselves down to have a look what we're working on. You can see there's a 13mm nut holding the main power going to the starter, and an 8mm just below it, another nut, holding on effectively the igniter wire, which is the signal that comes from your key, basically, when you turn it to start your engine. One tells it to start, one provides the power for it. You both need to remove both of those, then there's three of those bolts that hold the starter motor on at the front of the gearbox. Hex heads or Allen keys, two are easy to get to. The third one is a bit tricky because of the clutch slave. Now you could try and remove the clutch slave, but you could have a world of pain. So I tend to just use an extension or a long Allen key and remove the starter out of the way rather than pull the bolt out, which we'll see a little bit later on. So I sped this bit up. It's quite time consuming. I mean, you just turn in that little nut a tiny little bit at a time with a ratchet spanner or a tiny little socket. And you're just working it, working it, working it, knocking the GoPro off, working it, working it. So you can see it's a fiddle. I can't show you exactly what I'm doing. There's barely enough room for my hands. I'm going to start it with a spanner, the 8mm, just to free it off a little bit. And then get a little 8mm socket in between my fingers, like that, to get the rest of the nut off. Now let's get you in a little bit closer, see if we can show you what I'm doing. So there you can see, just using the little socket, and then just with my fingers, 
getting the nut off right at the end of the thread so we don't drop it into oblivion. And there it is. Put it somewhere safe. You don't want to lose that. Okay, and then you just need to pull those wires off. They're just on little tabs with a hole in. So you just need to whittle them off the, out the way like that. Sometimes the main cable, the top one with the 13mm nut, is quite a stiff cable. So it'd be quite tricky to get out the way, as you can see. So I'm just going to use a little screwdriver, just flick it off out the way. This is why you remove the battery, part of the reason, because you'll be sparking all over the place right now. Okay, so an 8mm hex or Allen key head for the three starter bolts, usually, anyway. When I get them in there, crack them off, so that means basically removing the most tension on them so they're loose. Use my cheat gun to get the one out uh, closest to the middle of the gearbox. We, our perspective right now is from the battery, by the way. And then I'm using an extended hex, 8mm. Now you're going to either need that tool or you're going to need to get this slave off. If you've got a uh, cable actuated clutch then this is a lot easier like on the three or sixes because that slave is not in the way. I'm going to get it loose and start getting it moving. Now there is an issue as you can see it's very tight down there but that little extension does help. Okay top one out of the way and we're left with this final third one. Sometimes they're different lengths, so it's worth checking on that. In this situation, on this vehicle, they're the same length, all three, but sometimes there's an odd one that's a bit of a different length. Now what we're going to do is slowly back out that bolt, as I'm doing, until the starter motor actually starts moving away from what we have, because we have that problem there. So you either round off those two bolts, which is so easy and common, and then you have a leaking slave, because you've bashed it, broken it, or... You just hold onto the starter motor with your left hand and undo the bolt with your right hand and the starter motor will just plop off into your hand like a lovely donut on a hot summer's day. Or similar analogies are available. Like so. Starter motor is now free. Now you've got it free, you need to get it out. There's not much room at the front of a 206. You could go down. That does work on some vehicles that don't have AC pipes and other stuff. You could go sideways. That also kind of doesn't work on this vehicle. Or you can go up. Now the top coolant pipe gets a little bit away here with the 206, but I've removed the bracket, which I'll show you in a second. And if you're very careful, you won't put a massive hole in the radiator while you're doing this. I scratched it a little bit, but, you know, worse things happen. So there we go. That's the little gap that I got it up from. As I say, in other vehicles there's a lot more room to deal with, and that's the little bracket we removed. 10mm socket or spanner, the little nut that holds it on. There's the old starter motor. It wasn't completely dead, but it was very slow, and all the earths checked out to be okay. So there's our fancy new one. You want to compare them side by side, make sure the bolt patterns are the right, the connections are the same, and it actually fits before you start fiddling with it. Thanks very much. I've been Piggy. This is Piggy Power. Give it a thumbs up, give it a like, check out my other projects.